On the Healthy Looks Great on You podcast, we talk a lot about the impact that chronic stress has on your health. It's real. But what do you do about it? Stay tuned for a very special guest today. I'm Dr. Vicki Petz Casper. I practiced obstetrics and gynecology for 20 years until I landed on the other side of the sheet as a very sick patient. When my own body betrayed me, I took a handful of pills to manage my disease and another handful to counteract the side effects. My health was out of control. Through surgery, medications, and lots of prayers, I regained my strength only to face another diagnosis. My doctor challenged me to make radical changes through lifestyle medicine. Now I feel great and I wanna help you make changes that make a difference. Healthy Looks Great on You podcast takes you to many medical schools so you can learn the power of lifestyle medicine. If you're ready to take control of your health, you're in the right place. Whether you're focused on prevention or you're trying to manage a condition, I'll give you practical steps to start your own journey toward better health because healthy looks great on you. This is episode 139. Well, I am so excited to have a very special guest on the podcast today, and that is Barb Roos. And I just want to tell you a little bit about Barb. She just wrote a book called Stronger Than Stress, 10 Spiritual Practices to Win the Battle of Overwhelm. So you see, that's why I had her come here, because I'm so overwhelmed, I needed her. She's also a speaker, author, literary agent, and Bible teacher. But my favorite thing that you have on your about page on your website is she is a real woman who's experienced deep anxiety, parenting challenges, family addiction drama, and long seasons of walking by faith in unanswered prayer. So God bless you and welcome. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. And uh, I just love the road that you and I ended up on that put me on the podcast because, gosh, we met how many years ago now? It's been several years. Yes, it has. (laughs) And so I just love, love, love the journey that you've had and how incredibly you are serving audiences in your expertise and genius. This is awesome. Well, thank you. You know, when we talk about lifestyle medicine, we talk about six pillars, and those are restorative sleep and nutritional eating and physical fitness and minimizing verbal substances and social connectedness. But when we talk about stress, it affects all of them, but all of them don't affect stress as much as it does. So to me, it's a, it's sort of an overarching thing Mm -hmm. to help. The conversation around stress, I, I see it as two different tensions. Uh, On one side, we know that stress is out there. We talk about it openly. Oh, I'm so stressed. Like if you talk with people, stress is going to naturally come up. And so there's this social acceptedness that there is stress. The reason why I wrote the book and the reason why I want to engage in these conversations is because you and I are aware of the damage. And so it's, it's a situation, particularly as women, essentially is um, we just live with stress. And so it is trying to elevate that the, that the hidden damage of chronic stress actually is so much more pervasive. And to convince women not to set themselves on fire to keep everybody else warm. Oh, it, right. Right. I, I, that is, that is the, that's the challenge these days because as women, we want to protect what we love. We want to fix what's broken. We want to get things on track. And we, in the book, I call it the good Christian woman syndrome. We will sacrifice ourselves trying to be everything to everybody. You know, I talk about in the book I haven't published yet, I talk about how I was afraid that if I stopped it wouldn't get done. Like the whole world's on my shoulders. Well, and, and let's be honest. I mean, you in your world uh, as a physician and then as a leader and an executive and as a parent and once upon a time as a wife, there was a lot on your shoulders. There were patients' lives who were on your shoulders. Uh, for anyone who's listening and you raised a family, like their little lives, we were to keep little people alive or a spouse 
We found keys every day so that a spouse could get to work. So we, in some ways, there was a season where so much relied upon us. But there are, there are those, impre- those practical moments where we have to remember that there is a God and it's not us. That is so absolutely true. There is a God and it's not us. And I think that's the thing. We, when we take on those roles that we are required to take on, and I'm remarried. You know, I made my husband's lunch this morning at five o'clock. <laughs> Make his normal lunch, but I made his lunch. But when we take on all that responsibility, we learn to depend on ourselves. Yes. And okay. then we think we don't need God until our whole lives start unraveling. And then we know we do. Again, and I want to speak, and you as well, we want to speak with compassion because uh, there, uh, there's a, an illustration in the book. Uh, I use spinning, spinning plates as a metaphor for uh, all of the things that we have happening in our lives. And I recognize the reality that there are some of you listening and you've got spinning plates that you that you feel like if though I have to keep spinning those plates. And if they like you said, Vicki, if if I don't spin them, it's all going to fall apart. The the big picture of the book is helping us recognize that God can actually take care of us and our spinning plates so that we can take care of ourselves. That's awesome. But practically speaking, how does that play out? Well, practically speaking, uh, what my favorite chapter title of the book is Get Off the Cross, Honey, Somebody Needs the Wood. <laughs> and that chapter starts us into, because in, I feel like I have to, uh, and I don't know if you feel the same way, sometimes we can't just convince people that they need to change. They have to feel their need for change. And what I want to do is is create that feel for the need of change by using Jesus' words in Matthew. And so in this chapter, I cover Jesus' words, and he says, Come to me, everyone who is weary and heavy burdened. And and I I think that pretty much everyone listening is going to say, yep, I am weary and heavy burdened. In the original language, weary was all about feeling like everything was on you, that self-sufficiency. That's what the weariness is that Jesus was talking about. And then carrying heavy burdens, that is about all of the expectations, all of the, all of the duties, all of the to-dos and the do-mores. And so if you are exhausted by all of that, overwhelmed, Jesus. He doesn't tell you you've got to read your Bible five days a week. He doesn't say you've got to pray for 45 minutes a day. He says, come. It's an invitation. And what he wants to give us is rest. He wants to care. The work has to be done, but he wants to teach us how to live in him so that we let Jesus carry the weight as we do the work of our lives. That's really beautiful. That's such a, that picture of invitation to me is as beautiful as anything that's through the entire New Testament or the Old Testament. Or, yes, I, like there's a, when I think about that verse, like the word picture, Jesus goes on to say, take my yoke upon you. And yoke always felt like this really antiquated word, but yoke still exists. And most of us know that a yoke is where they have one animal that is basically harnessed to another animal. And the visualization is that um, there is a more experienced animal that helps teach the younger animal the way to go. Now, Vicki, I don't know about you, but when I am left to my own devices and I'm trying to live apart from God, I am going to wander. I'm going to stomp on things that I shouldn't stomp on. I'm going to go too fast. I'm going to wreck into things. And so when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, uh, what Jesus essentially is saying, let me put my arm around you, around your shoulder, because essentially stress has us in a chokehold. It is a chokehold that is strangling us. We are often, Vicki, sometimes we try to run ahead of what God is doing in our lives. Can I get an amen? (laughs) 
And so Jesus, he's putting his arm around us. And I find it very interesting um, on a shirt. If you're wearing a shirt, friends, the shoulder area of the shirt in construction is called a yoke. Get that? Really? Yes. And so Jesus is putting his arm around our yoke. And he's saying, learn from me. Let me teach you. He's saying, let me teach you the right pace to live. Let me teach you the path to follow. Let me guide you so that you're not trying to run ahead and figure things out on your own. And so Jesus, who has the experience, who is our peace, is teaching us the pace so that we don't live stressed every day. I love that picture of pace because I want to be productive. I, I want to do things. I want people to be able to depend on me. I want to fulfill my purpose. And it's just as bad for our health for us to live without intentionality and without purpose. And so the point is not just to say, Jesus, take the wheel. I'm just going to sit back and do nothing. It's let's walk this out together. Well said. He, we have work to do. Uh, there is a difference between being hurried and stressed and being busy. Uh, Vicki, you and I are busy. We have we have these things that God has called us to do. We and women, if you're or whoever is listening, men and women, uh, we should have purpose. We should have kingdom oriented goals. Uh, we should have people we're investing with. Even if you're retired or staying at home, uh, I heard this years ago. This amazing story of a man. He was. He was a neurosurgeon. Um, he used to go to Rick Warren's church and he was a group leader at Rick Warren's church. And he developed, um, I think he had, a, he had a spinal condition. And after like a dozen surgeries, he was medically disabled. That man ran Bible study groups on Zoom, people around the world from his hospital bed in his home. So he still had work that he had to do. We all have work no matter where we're at. But what Jesus wants to make sure of is that our work is not wrecking us, that we are not running in chaos from sunup till sundown. He wants us to experience his peace. And the peace is only found in him. That's so true. And peace is really lacking. I feel like so many of us live on a merry-go-round and sometimes we're busy without actually accomplishing anything that is of eternal value. Well, yeah, because the urgent over the important. We're just, we're t we are playing whack-a-mole every day, trying to do the to-do list. And again, we're doing it with the best of intentions, but Part of why I wanted to write this book on spiritual practices, because these are the practices that Jesus wants to teach us so that our days have meaning and value. Because the last thing we want to do is get to whenever the end of our lives are, whatever, whenever that is, and us wonder if we made a difference. The way of Jesus is the way to help us make a difference. Resting in here peace in his methods and a plan and a purpose for our lives. I mean, it's, it's something, it's all built on trust. I think so many times we think, but this is the way I want my life to go. So I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. Yep. When God's saying, uh -uh, come to me, slow down. That's, that's not my plan and purpose for you. And we just, we have to rest in it. We really do. And rest has always been a four letter word for me. Well, I have, so there is a spiritual practice that incorporates rest. But if I can share a personal example, um, I recently uh, had some blood work done. Uh, I had gone into, I'm a woman of a certain age now. Uh, so I had gone into the doctor to uh, have blood work done so that I could start uh, hormone replacement therapy. And so she wanted me to have an extra panel done because I needed to, she wanted to make sure I had all the options available. So uh, this was about a month ago. I go in, I get the blood work done, and I it's the day before my book party celebration. So I have four interns who are in town, who've flown in from town, and I'm hosting a retreat for them. It was all planned out, no stress. Uh, I had my book launch party uh, at my church that next day, all planned out, interns, no, no stress. 
That morning when I woke up of the party at 7.30 a.m., the first message I had was from my mother, who lives two hours away, who was my emergency contact and said, the hospital lab has an emergency phone. They need you to call them. And Vicki, your listeners won't appreciate this, but you will. Uh, they were, it was an emergency because my hemoglobin was only 5.6. What? Yes. You were running on empty. So here's the thing, no symptoms. So that, so at 8, 7.30, 8 a.m. that morning, I get this phone call that says, you are dangerously anemic and what are you going to do about it? And I was like, well, okay. Well, the day goes on and there were things that just kept popping up. We had, one of my kids had a sick dog. Another kid at the party was at my release party. Another adult kid was throwing up in the bathroom. I had signs that weren't delivered. I like, I had an ex-boyfriend that I hadn't seen in three years surprise show up to the book launch party. <laughs> and so I share all of this because there are going to be unexpected things that happen. But what I have learned over the years of the spiritual practices is I have learned what it looks like to keep Jesus' peace at the forefront of my mind. Now, did I feel some pressure? Because I was like, that's a lot to happen to somebody in one day. Yes. And that's not everything that happened. But I learned through the spiritual practices, uh, the one, the cornerstone one in the book is surrender. Most of our stress as women is because we are trying to stay in control of everything. And so that cornerstone spiritual practice of surrender. And so I had to sit at certain points during the day. And the title of the chapter is the surrender prayer. And it's God, I can't, but you can, and I will let you. And so I, I, had, to, I had to really focus on that surrender prayer. And then there's another practice of gratitude. It's in the celebration chapter. And so I was like, okay, I just, I want to keep a spirit of gratitude. I'm not ignoring everything that's happening, but when the lab later, I didn't, they gave me the number, but when I recognized that I was really like medically, they're like, ah, I hadn't had a symptom. I had been sleeping fine, working out, full energy, all of this. And I was like, Lord, I have no idea what's happening here. My body is not doing great, but God, I feel great. And so I practiced gratitude. And so throughout the day, I was incorporating those spiritual simplicity. When my day got chaotic, I was like, okay, Barb, let's stay focused. You can't do everything, but if you can only do one thing, what can that do? And so these practices help us to stay focused on what the most important things are but we have to learn how to use them consistently over time. And I would say in advance of a stressful moment, you, you obviously had some practice using those tools when all of that came at you. And I used to have women all the time that would come to me during their pregnancy and they're like, oh, I don't want an epidural, I don't want an epidural. And I was like, then you need to go to the classes, you need to practice the breathing techniques, when you're not in pain, because all that stuff goes out the window the time, first time that contraction hit. And it's the same thing with our spiritual walk. You knew, okay, this is what I do. I, sur I surrender. And, you know, I always say the p place of perfect peace is the place of perfect surrender. And mm -hmm. you said that prayer, but what I pray is whatever, mm -hmm. Lord, just whatever. Okay, yeah. whatever. And you also yeah. posted this morning on Facebook the verse from Isaiah. Uh, yes. I think it's 4110. It's one of my favorite verses. And the reason is that when I got really, really sick, I kept seeing that verse everywhere, but it was out of the message translation. And it says in message translation, it says, don't panic. Don't panic. And so good. So good. <laughs> so good. Because that's our natural response to a stressful event is panic. Because like you said, we're not in control. Very much so. And I, for me, one of the early, and I didn't know if I wanted to put this into the book or not, and I wanted to keep it at the high level. Uh, a lifetime ago, when I was a pharmaceutical sales rep, uh, one of the drugs that I sold was a very popular antidepressant. And I remember how valuable it was for me to just understand our body's response to stress. And so I cover that at the beginning of the book, but I keep it at a very high level. 
But it is helpful for me to remember that in my natural state, my body will react to what my brain perceives as threatening. And the way of Jesus, when, when Jesus becomes our peace and our perfect peace, we feel less threatened by the world around us. And when we feel less threatened, our body is not going to react into fight or flight as often. And for me, that was really helpful to keep in mind uh, because there are going to be, and hear me, there are going to be situations in life when we should be stressed. If the doctor calls and says that your kid has type 1 diabetes, you're going to be stressed. If you are, if you're on a plane and things start getting, you're good. And so stress was actually created by God as a protective indicator to tell us that we're reacting a certain way to our environment. But chronic stress, when you're stressed all of the time, afraid all the time, anxious all the time, irritable all the time, that's a spiritual issue because you have what I take from 2 Timothy 1.7, the spirit of fear. When everything is making you anxious and afraid, that is something that Jesus wants you to address. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense to me. And I love the way that fits into lifestyle medicine because we have all of the neurochemicals that get released. We have all of the that fear area of our brain, like the amygdala, and all of the neuronal synapses that can actually get wired or rewired because when you when you're worried and you're anxious you you literally create a neural pathway that's like i always say it's a rut in your brain you just keep going down that same rut and so you have to do something to to shift that and you know we talk about stress management and lifestyle medicine but there's no magic wand to make it go away and even jesus doesn't just make it go away you have to have these spiritual practices to come to him. Right. And I love that you talked about like the neural pathways and neuroplasticity. And so I want to share a story that came to me and I didn't put the story in the book, but it's a story I use when I talk to audiences uh, about these about these pathways. Um, I, I was in the eighth grade. Uh, Vicki and I have met. Um, there's actually Vicki and I have a picture of us standing together uh, because I am overly tall. Which meant that when I was a kid, they immediately said, this girl should play basketball. So I was in the seventh grade. I went out for the basketball team, partly because I wanted to play basketball, but also because that's where all the popular girls were at on that team. And I wanted to be popular. So basketball tryouts, um, I could run really fast. But Vicki, I wasn't that good of a dribbler and I couldn't shoot all that well. So I wasn't, I didn't make the team. And I mean, I'm devastated. Well, the seventh grade coach, her name is Miss Bednarik. Still remember her name. She said, Barb, she said, you actually need to be stronger. She said, uh, your, your dribbling skills, you just don't have good muscle coordination or shooting. And it's because you need strength. And so she told me when weight, like when the kids would go to the weight room. And so Vicki, that following Tuesday, I showed up at the weight room at my junior high. And I was the only girl in this weight room filled with stinky, sweaty junior high boys. And, uh, and this, is the, this is the 80s, folks. There's no, like, we didn't have great ventilation. We did not have windows. It was basically boys after school and their old spice had worn off by lunchtime. And there I was, and I had a choice that I had to make that day. Was I going to keep showing up? And so I started learning how to lift weights as this is this only girl in these pop bottle glasses, two giant front teeth. I am oversized and I'm there with the scrawny boys. And every Tuesday and Thursday, I kept showing up and I had to learn how to lift the weights. And then I, I would I would struggle and they would help. And and that is that is practicing. We're not going to be good at it at first. But practice, what makes it matter is that we keep showing up. And when you and I keep showing up, even if you don't, if, if you've got one minute to read your Bible, read for one minute. The practice isn't valid just because you sit there for 20 minutes. Just do it for one minute. If you pray for one minute, 
Pray that one minute as often as you can. God can do something with that. Other practices are Sabbath. Maybe you can't get to taking a whole day, but can you take two hours to just sit and rest? Absolutely. But the most important value of practicing is to keep showing up. And so I kept showing up all that eighth grade, that seventh grade year, and I got stronger and I made the eighth grade basketball team. But more importantly, Vicki, I've been lifting weights since that girl was in the seventh grade. And now that I am over 50, I part of what the doctor's office told me when uh, they called me last month, they just said, it appears that the rest of your overall health is so strong. That's why your body has been covering for you this whole time. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now I can smell that junior high locker room. <laughs> that is such a powerful memory. I can smell it from here. <laughs> I, I can still smell it and it's been 40 years. Woo! You were real down. So I think about the spiritual disciplines. You, you call them to spiritual practices, but the practice always, always, always requires discipline. So I am super excited about your book and I would love for you to Tell up our listeners where they can find you, where they can order your book. And I'm going to look and see if I can find that picture because I'm standing on the hearth and you're standing on the floor and you're still taller than me. And that's not saying much because I'm not very tall. I can track it down quickly and I will send it to you because we we made quite a sight together, my friends. I have to say we look as cute as cute could be, but definitely one of us is is, su- is super action packed. That's me saying that you're short action pack. And then one of us is just real, real tall. But um, and so um, I will I will have that in a moment. And the Stronger Than Stress book itself, friends, uh, there is actually a Bible study that goes with it. Uh, I am primarily a Bible study author. So for those of you who do love Bible study, there is a six week Bible study with video that you can access. And uh, you can go to, I'll send, Vicki, I can send you the link so that you can pop it up and uh, have it for the ladies. But it is, both book and Bible study are available anywhere you love to purchase your books and Bible studies. And the best of all is uh, you can do them separately. Uh, You don't have to do the book and Bible study together. What I recommend uh, is that you get either a book club with some friends or a Bible study group with some girlfriends so that you can all talk and journey together. Yes, there's so much power in together. There is, there is. And um, if women want more information or maybe they just want to check things out, uh, you can trek over to barbruce.com. I have a link there where you can check out the book and the Bible study. And on top of that, you can actually watch the first video session uh, so that you can decide whether you want to uh, to share that with some friends and say, hey, do we want to get a group together and talk about how we can live less stressed with more peace every day? That is so awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming and talking to us about stress management. And I think it just uh, fits perfectly with lifestyle medicine. I always say that that that's one that you just absolutely cannot do without Jesus. Amen. I love that wisdom. Love it. Wow. What words of wisdom from someone who has such a passion for following Christ. And I hope that that will make you want to dive into God's word a little bit more. And if the Bible is unfamiliar to you, take a peek for yourself because there is a peace that passes understanding And there is a rest that is possible through Jesus Christ. And I would challenge you to check it out for yourself and see. But Barb really didn't tell you all there is to know about herself. Go to her website. You're going to want to know more about her. It's barbroose.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. But this latest Bible study, Stronger Than Stress, is just one of her many books that she's written in Bible studies. She's got a new one coming out in 2025. And she speaks all over the country as well as abroad. Uh, She is just a beautiful woman inside and out, and I am so thrilled that she took time to be with us today. So go follow Barb Roos.
The information contained in this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not considered to be a substitute for medical advice. You should continue to follow up with your physician or healthcare provider and take medication as prescribed. Though the information in this podcast is evidence-based, new research may develop and recommendations may change.